Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Bite Size. I'm very happy to have with me uh, Alyssa Briggs and Mariana Gulagi. I nearly got it. Gulagi? Gul oh. Anyway, <laughs> I tried. Um, so uh, these were mentor and mentee, respectively, in um, the mentorship program that is just uh, that just closed, and um, they will give us some of their impressions during the time there. Um, and now it's off to you. All right. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you for joining us here. Um, so yeah, I'm. Alyssa, uh, I will be going ahead and starting our presentation. Mariana, can you go ahead to the next slide? All right, so just to start with a little bit of background on us. So we were both a part of the second round of this mentorship program. Um, so we're just going to go over basically our, what were our assumptions before we started the program, kind of what goals did we start with? Why did we apply? You know, what were we looking to get out of this? Uh, what did we see as some benefits or takeaways from the program? And then just advice for anyone interested, uh, whether it's applying as a mentor or a mentee. All right, so you can go ahead to the next slide. Okay, so I did just want to show this picture before we got started. So as you can see, this program is quite global. It's grown a lot since the first round and also is uh, expanding into different regions as well. Uh, so this is awesome. We're reaching some more underrepresented communities. Uh, you can see me up there in the U.S. and the Mariana down here in South America. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a really cool aspect of the program. I thought uh, whenever we come together for the larger group meetings in the program, uh, it's awesome to see what everyone is working on and the progress they're making, all in different parts. So just a really fun aspect of the program. Okay, so more into what we were going to talk about, the assumptions that we had before starting the program. Uh, so one of my assumptions was that the mentor and mentee pairing was going to be based on experience level. So I myself am fairly new with NFCore and Nextflow. I've only been working with it for about a year. So I was really hoping that I could help someone who was uh, essentially completely new so that I, we could kind of get the most out of the program as possible. And what we found is this was definitely true. Um, a lot of thought goes into making these pairings, not just based on experience level, but also on your research interests. Uh, so Mariana and I both have some interest in kind of viral or pathogen interactions with hosts, and we were able to do some good work that we were both interested in because of that. So this was a really great aspect about the program. Uh, another assumption, this is one that Mariana specifically had, was that there would be kind of strict guidelines and expectations. And what we found is that the program is actually really flexible. So it's it's not strict, it's not rigid. There are some expectations as to, you know, try to meet two hours a week, try to accomplish certain things without the program, but your options are huge. Um, so you can really cater that to your experience level, how much time you have to put into this, uh, and your interests as well. So that was great. And then another assumption was that you can learn Nextflow with no prior experience within the scope of the program. So the program itself is going to just be about four months, um, which might sound a little bit daunting to try to learn everything about Nextflow in that time. Um, but you absolutely can learn what you need to about Nextflow in that time period. So you can go from having no experience, if that's where you're starting, to ending up with basically the skills needed to write and maintain a pipeline, if that's what you're looking for. So we're going to talk about a little bit about our, our IINs before the program. When I first applied, I didn't have any experience with Nextflow, and I was starting with bioinformatics. So my main goals involved was just to learn how the, to learn the basics, to how to run pipelines, but also I had interest in to learn how to write the code. So not only my own pipelines, but also help in pipelines of other people in the community. And Alice is going to talk about a little bit about her mentor site. Yeah, so my goals when going into this program, um, I really wanted to contribute to our NFCore community in some way. So I had a great experience uh, with having a mentor of my own through my university um, who really passed on the skills for NFCore and Nexo to me and 
having learned those, I really wanted to be able to pass them on to myself. So that was a big goal. And then I also wanted to gain experience and confidence by teaching the basics of next Um So as I've said many times, I was fairly new. I've done mentoring and teaching before, but never with anything related to bioinformatics. So I definitely wanted to expand into that and just get more experience and confidence. And then I also went into this wanting to learn um, from my mentee and fellow mentors. So definitely this isn't a one-way street. Uh, if you're a mentor, you're still going to learn a lot yourself. Uh, and I definitely did. But that was an aim going, going into the program. And uh, as Alisa said before, the program is very flexible. So in our case, what we tried to, to do was weekly meetings. And each meeting, we tried to solve a problem. So in the first meetings, we worked on the beginner tutorial of NextFlow. But we also later worked on pipelines that already existed, but trying to, we also tried to implement new pipelines and new modules to contribute to any core community. And during this whole uh, process, I was able to learn not only how to run these pipelines, but also how to write and test these new models and new pipelines that we tried to implement. And uh, another experience that was really good was to see that not only we can contribute with code to the NFCAR community, but also in other ways. For example, there is the Slack of the NFCAR community, and you can reach questions inside of this Slack and answer and help people with their questions. But, and another way that we can help in the communities is um, helping the translation of the training materials in other language than English to help people around the globe to learn next fall. So some of my experiences, again, like I said before, uh, even if you're a mentor, it's not a one-way street, make sure to learn from your mentee strengths. I think that was an awesome part of the program. So of course I brought more of the NF core next one knowledge to the table. Uh, Mariana definitely had her own strengths as well, having been in bioinformatics. Uh, longer than me. So I learned a lot from her, which was a great experience. And then something that's kind of uh, general just about working with anyone while you're coding. So it's nice to hack through that code whenever you're working on something and you hit a problem, right? Uh, so you're able to bounce ideas off each other and essentially solve that problem really quickly. So, you know, you have these weekly meetings and they're two hours and some people might think that's a big time commitment, uh, but it's really enjoyable. You know, you're you're working through what you're passionate about and you're having fun while doing it. So, so great experience. And uh, we chose two examples just to show of what uh, can be done during this process. So in, this is our, in our case, because uh, Alisa is a co-author of this pipeline called Fire Integration. And one of the things that needs to be done to this pipeline was organized um, the code into sub workflows. So instead of the main pipeline have a bunch of line of code, we just call the sub workflows to in the main pipeline, and uh, we organize this new this code into the new file to work uh, the sub workflow. And for me, it was an interesting experience to see how to make a pipeline more readable. As I say, uh, to see how pipeline uh, organized when we used on Nextflow. So this is one example, and we try to, to show another example a little more complex because um, three mentors, Sebastian, Koja, and Alex, were working in a pipeline that involving machine learning, and they proposed to uh, their mentee Luria to not only learn Nextflow using this pipeline, but also contributed uh, with this pipeline. So, so she was able to learn the basics, but also she made, a, in the end of the program, she was able to major, um, make a contribution to the NFCOR community. And uh, we also want to give a little advice for future mentor, uh, mentees and mentors. And for the mentees, one thing that is, is good is try to learn Git and Bash before the program, at least the basics, because since most of the codes on Expo and FR are on GitHub, 
this will help you to give your first steps when you start the program. Also, if you already have some experience with other programming language and you have a pipeline, try to implement this pipeline into a Nexco pipeline. You see that you, it's gonna have a, it's, you're gonna have a good experience with it. And we had some mentees that did that in our round and uh, they, had, they had good experience doing that. And also, if you are interested in running pipelines, try to use your own data or data that you are interested in, because in this way, you will, will be able to see how to implement Nextflow in your everyday life, in your career. And then, so my, my advice can apply kind of both to mentors and mentees. Uh, my first uh, advice that I'd pass on is don't be afraid to start small. So even if your goal in the end is you want to be working on pipelines, uh, know how much experience you're starting with and where you need to start. Uh, so if that's going through training documentation to start with, or, you know, trying to just run an NF core pipeline, um, you know, don't be afraid to take these smaller steps along the way. They're worth just as much as being able to write a pipeline down the road. Uh, so like Marianne was saying, apply your own research interests. So look for scripts that you're using every day, right? Try to turn them into modules for NF core. You're contributing to the community, you're working on what you like, and you're not necessarily starting so big that it becomes daunting. Going along with that, I suggest setting something like stepwise goals. You know, if you're starting from the beginning and you have to go through the training documentation and you're trying to learn modules and sub workflows and pipelines and all of that, make sure that you celebrate every success and every little thing that you accomplish. Uh, it can feel like a lot uh, to get through, especially if you're trying to write a pipeline. Uh, so just make sure you're acknowledging all those little steps along the way. And then just don't be afraid to ask for help whenever you're unsure. There's a whole community that's going to be ready to help you. That's going to happen in the regular Slack channels, uh, which everyone is applying to the issue that you're running into, as well as you're going to have your own Slack channel just for your mentorship program. So even if you're a mentor, you know, you don't have to know everything. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have a question and you're going to learn something just as much as your mentor is too. Uh, just a few messages for, for you to take and think about it. Uh, the first one is, don't, uh, this program is not for people that already have experience or have no experience. It's, it's a program for everyone. So don't be afraid to apply as a mentor or as a mentee because it's gonna be, have a you're gonna have a good experience, uh, not only learning next level but also sharing your knowledge with others. And if you're thinking about applying as a mentor and and you're insecure about you don't have any experience or few experience, uh, always remember that uh, your experience is valuable for someone that doesn't have experience at all at all with next level. So this person will be happy to be your mentee and have your knowledge. And last, as Alisa said, always celebrate each step of the, on the way in the program because it's a step closer to the goals that both mentors and mentees establish in the beginning of the program. All right, so that being said, we're pretty much done with talking about our experiences. Uh, so round three of the mentorship is open. The applications are still open until May 15th. So if you're interested in applying as a mentor or mentee, make sure you get it in by then. This round is going to run, I believe it's June through the end of September. Um, and then we also have linked here experiences in round two. That's going to be the blog post that talks about the experiences and projects uh, that the pairs worked on during round two. Um, so yeah, thank you all for joining today. If you have any questions about our experiences, we'll uh, be happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Alisa and Mariana. Um, so now we are open for any questions from the audience. Um, maybe I can I can break the ice here. I have a question. No, Phil, you can come in. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I have a question. Um, basically, there's one point that everyone always thinks about when they're applying for something like this, which is the time commitment. And it was mentioned before. 
I was wondering how much, apart from these two hours that you spend each week together, um, did you put in separately from these meetings, each each of you, in a way? Yeah, so we had the two-hour meetings, and then, of course, Mariana would kind of work on some things uh, in addition for a little bit longer, and then, you know, whenever we needed to, we'd have conversations on Slack um, to get her through those issues. So, yeah, Mariana, how, how much time uh, in addition did you spend? Um, I think... Uh like four hours maybe, sometimes less, because uh, we worked a lot together during this meeting. So most of the time when I was outside of the meeting, I was like um, focused on learning more about one thing that we discussed more than the trying to solve a problem. But we had another pairs, other pairs that didn't have this kind of weekly meetings. So they just uh, talk it through chat on Slack and then if they have uh, like a big problem to solve, then then they have uh, the meeting. So it's very flexible for both of the mentors and mentees to establish how how long how many time they're gonna spend mm -hmm. on these interactions. Thank you. Um, yeah, brilliant talk. Thank you. It was really really like nice to hear your experiences. We spent a lot of time kind of planning how to build this and how formalized it should be and stuff and you're never really sure if it's going to work out but hearing you guys talk about it really uh makes me feel very very pleased that it was it was a useful experience for you both um i had a couple of just curiosity questions i was wondering how much this kind of overlaps with your your day job mariana is this like something you're going to carry on using day to day going forward and is it something you were already kind of trying to do before the mentorship came along or yes so right now i am a biologist so i'm trying to transition into bioinformatics so for my phd i'm trying i'm thinking about implementing a new pipelines that i use that i will use on that is python and r scripts into next flow. so my main goal is to try to use on my everyday life on, from now on and um and one thing that I'm trying to do here with my peers is trying to show everyone that Nexo is, is a great tool to today to, to learn. So I hope that I can convince others to use also. <laughs> uh, we have a question in the chat. Um, the, it goes, uh, did you use any tools besides Slack, GitHub and video calls to work together? Yeah, on the so beginning, our, we, we used to Gitpod, right? Yeah, we used Gitpod for a little while, and then we actually transitioned over to VS Code, um, mm -hmm. and we're using LiveShare a lot. Uh, that was super helpful in terms of trying to code together. Uh, I think that's those are the main programs we used. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe I should have mentioned that anyone can um, unmute themselves. I, I allow that now. <laughs> so if you have a question, just unmute yourself. Uh, Is there anything you would do differently if you were starting together again next week? So I think my main thing um, that I would do differently, since this was kind of the first time I'd mentored uh, NF Core and Excel or anything like that, um is to set kind of like I said earlier more stepwise goals um going in we weren't exactly sure what to work on I guess uh which was kind of one of the harder parts of the program is you know figuring out what to work on or if you want to convert a, a some script into an nf core module um trying to make sure that it it kind of fits the standards that nf core has um so really working through that and trying to uh, come up with those stepwise goals maybe in advance, I think would have been helpful to give us a little bit more direction. Uh, so that's kind of what I would have done differently. And, and I totally agree because in the beginning, uh, I had uh, probably I should look more into the pipelines and models that already existed. So I had the idea how to uh, like write on my own pipeline or something like that. But uh, we had some good experience trying to find out which way to go. So in the end, we had a good experience because we tried a lot of different ways and uh, that was good in, 
but this what this I said I agree that that would be a good way to restart. I guess that's, that's kind of uh, the downside of having it very flexible. When you say you work on anything and then it's difficult to know what to work on. <laughs> right, yeah. That's cool. Do we have any more questions from the audience? Do we have any more questions from Phil? <laughs> I could probably think of more, but I'm, <laughs> I've said quite a few already. <laughs> well, uh, in that case, I would very much want to thank you both uh, for being here today and uh, presenting the, the work also that you've done. And I want to thank you also specifically for contributing to NFCore. It's lovely to have you in the community. And of course, I want to thank the audience for listening in and um, the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding the talks and as it happens, also this mentorship program. Thank you very much and have a great day. <laughs>